Hi guys, it's Mike here and today I'm bringing you another tutorial on Synology products, uh, specifically a disk station NAS today and how to use a disk station to back up your files through Time Machine on Mac OS X 12.3 Sierra. Now why I mention that version is because from 12.3 and onwards, both SMB protocols and AFP is supported. Um, so that's why we're talking about that. Now bear in mind that AFP is supported by Mac OS X uh, older than 12.3. But going forward from 12.3, both SMB and AFP are supported, and SMB is actually the default protocol. So with that in mind, let's jump into this tutorial and show you how to use both of those protocols to back up Time Machine to your disk station NAS. Okay, now with that in mind, let's continue on and get into the tutorial. So before setting up disk station as the destination for Time Machine, you'll need to log into the DSM and change a few settings. So let's open the DSM. I've got it open here. Now, I'd probably recommend creating a new user account and that way we can control the data and how it's used and what has access to it and we can set quota limits and things like that if we create a new user account and a new share specifically for Time Machine backups. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's go into Control Panel. We're going to go to User and we're going to create a new user. So let's create a new user and let's call it Time Machine. Okay, now we don't need to fill out anything that isn't a required field and for this uh, tutorial I'm not going to save time and let's just make a simple password or you can auto generate one or make a complicated one it's completely up to you I'm just gonna make a make one that I use and everything else default is fine so let's click next and we're gonna leave it in the default system group of users click next. Right now we're not going to add any read or write permissions to any folders because we haven't created the share that we're going to use for Time Machine yet, so let's click next. Now if you have multiple volumes here, you can set the quota limit per volume. We only have one, so let's go ahead and set that quota limit. I'm going to make mine 50 gig. Mind you, that is going to be uh, slightly over 50 gig once you take into um, some of the variables for the way that drives are formatted, so on and so forth, into account. Probably only by a gig or a couple of gig tops. So let's go next. Um, we're going to leave all that on tick, that's fine. And we're going to leave all of the speed settings as default. Let's click next. We're going to review these settings. It all looks good to me. There's no access to any of our existing folders, which is what we want. It's in the users group and it's got a 50 gig quota limit. So let's click apply. Okay, so our Time Machine user is created. So what we want to do now is we want to go into the control panel. We're already here. Go to shared folder. And we're going to create a new shared folder specifically for Time Machine backups. Well, let's go ahead and call it Time Machine Backups. How's that? And then here we can actually set the volume that it belongs to. Because I only have one, I only have one choice. And this is where our quota comes into effect. Everything else is fine. So we're going to leave it as is. And we're going to click Okay. Now what we want to do is give our Time Machine user read and write permissions to our Time Machine folder. So let's go ahead and select um, Okay, so what we want to do is give our newly created Time Machine user uh, read and write permissions to our newly created Time Machine Backups folder. So here we are, we're looking at the edit permissions and we have all the users down here. So let's go ahead and give read and write permissions to the Time Machine um, user. Now we can actually take away permissions, but right now we don't need to. So let's just leave that as is and click OK. Now we've pretty much done all of the file permission stuff that we want to do. So let's go ahead and control, close the control panel. But what we do need to do is turn on the services for AFP. So let's go into Control Panel, let's go to File Services, and what we want to do is under this first tab, scroll down to AFP and enable the AFP service. Once we've enabled the AFP service, we need to also make sure that the, the Bonjour service delivery is enabled for AFP as well. So let's do that so it broadcasts the um, folder. And what we need to do is set the Time Machine folder. Our Time Machine folder is the Time Machine backup folder. So let's go Enabled, hit Apply, and Apply. And there we are. We can actually go ahead now and move over to the Mac system and start setting up 
our time machine back up. So let's go ahead and hide that window and let's go into system preferences and time machine. All right, so what we want to do is tick this box back up automatically and it's going to ask us which folder we want to back up to. Here is our time machine backup folder that we created automatically being picked up because of the Bonjour service that we have enabled and specified the folder in Bonjour. So let's go ahead and click that. We're going to use this disk. We also need to go ahead and specify the user account that's going to connect with, which was time machine. And then we need to use the password that we specified and click connect. As you can see, we've authenticated and we've now set up a time machine backup. It's about to start its first backup in two minutes time. And there we go. We've got 53.7 gig, as I mentioned before, a little bit more after formatting and all the rest of it. And there we have it. If you followed my steps exactly as is, you should have a working time machine backup now too. Now bear in mind, as a little side note, if it doesn't automatically find the time machine folder that we specified in the disk station, in the DSM, we can manually add the drive by mounting it. How do we do that? Well, we just need to go to our Mac system menu, click on go, connect to server, and we need to enter the protocol, colon, double forward slash, IP address of our disk station. So in this case, it's AFP, colon, double forward slash, and then my IP address of my disk station. If we hit connect, and then we authenticate using the same credentials we specified before, we can specify the access that we want to give, or the folder we want to mount, sorry, and you can see there is our Time Machine Backups folder. And if we go to Select Disk, we actually have two options now. Because one is the advertised AFP storage. And the other one is the mounted storage. So you can see there's a slight difference in the folder path. But this is going to be confusing. So obviously if it is working before you mount, don't go ahead and mount. Because it will only create more confusion later on down the line. So let's go ahead and remove that drive. And you can see it's gone back to just one available disk. So what we want to do now is show you guys how to do the same steps using SMB. So let's go ahead and remove this disk from our Time Machine backups. And then what we're going to do is go back into the disk station. We're going to untick AFP. And we're going to go back to this first tab. We're going to untick AFP again. We're going to enable SMB. And we're going to go back to this advanced tab and enable Bonjour SMB. And we can see here that our Time Machine Backups Holder is already ticked because of what we did before. But if you have, haven't done this yet, then you will still need to do this step for the first time. So we can close that. We can click Apply. And everything should work. I probably might just mention really quickly as a side note that under SMB, under advanced settings, um, you will need to make sure that the maximum SMB protocol is SMB3. That is what's required for Mac OS X Sierra. Um, but I think by default, it should be enabled to SMB3. So let's click apply and again apply. Um, so yep, we just, we're going to accept that because we're turning AFP off. Now, the reason I've turned AFP off instead of leaving it is just to prove that we're using the SMB protocol. You can leave both protocols enabled at the same time and choose uh, at your desire uh, on the fly. But like I said, we just want to we just want to make sure that we're using SMB, so we're disabling AFP for simplicity's sake. So let's go ahead and close that window once again. We're going to go back into System Preferences. We're going to go into Time Machine, and we're going to hit Backup automatically. And you can actually see here that it hasn't picked up our SMB folder. So that's really great. So that step, well, it's not really great, but it's good that I showed you that step before about mounting because we're going to have to go ahead and do that again. So let's cancel this. Let's go to the Mac menu, go, connect to server, and we're going to put in the protocol SMB colon double forward slash and then server IP address of our disk station. Let's hit connect. Now we need to make sure that we use the time machine user account that we specified earlier on. Hit connect and select the folder that we want to use the time machine backups for. And you can see now the drive has mounted and automatically opened. If we select the backup disk, we now have the option of SMB. And you can see if I hover over that, it actually says SMB. So it's given us the SMB protocol. 
Now we need to authenticate it for Time Machine. So let's go ahead and put in the password. And once again, it's given us the exact same settings before that we were using when we had AFP enabled, but we're now using the SMB protocol. This is handy if you have multiple um, machines on the network other than Mac that also use the SMB protocol like Windows PCs, for instance. All right, guys. Now, once again, if you followed my steps exactly as I shown you, then this should be working perfectly for you as well. Um, congratulations if you've gotten this far and have had no issues. All right, guys, thanks for watching this tutorial. I really hope that it's helped you out. Uh, I know I enjoyed making it. I want to thank my partners at Synology for making this video possible for you guys. And uh, if it has helped you out, give it a thumbs up, give it a like, share it. Uh, leave me a comment down below about uh, other videos that you'd like to see, maybe about Synology products or anything in particular at all. And as always, guys, I'll catch you in my next video. Peace.